Have you ever bought a device before where you're so freaking excited about the product? Like you couldn't really wait to actually even unbox it. Like literally you got it right at that spot as it's been delivered. You couldn't even wait to get inside. You started to tear it off, try to get out the package and actually get into the device. And all of a sudden you open up the device, you start using it and your excitement that was at like a thousand and one percent literally just drops like all the way down to zero. Well, that was my experience with this watch right here. The Fossil Garrett HR. And should be sold. Um, fair enough, this watch is actually really beautiful. Um, the gold accents all around it just makes it really beautiful. Looks like a regular day to day watch. There's no way you want to take a glance at this and you will think that it, will, it is actually a fully loaded smartwatch. So, um, what made this excitement literally drop down to zero and why am I comparing it with my Samsung Active Gear 2? Well, let's get into the business of today. You're welcome to Second Time Labs. It's your boy, Say Joni, and let's do it. So first up, the build. Um, this device is really interesting. Um, I like the chain link. It's actually really premium. This is where you get on literally smartwatches that are literally 350, 400, 500 bucks, all the way to probably like two, three grand. It is a decent solid build. I've had this in different environments, including water actually, it's actually waterproof on the water. And this guy has performed excellently well. You know, this is a real, nice work of art which is not in less than what you should actually expect from fossil um being the company that they are which had always been around watches generally before they eventually transferred it into the smartwatch so what makes this five gen or the fifth generation um smartwatch no longer my favorite and what actually became the bomber for me first off let's start with Still the design and the build, this guy is actually heavy, so it only makes sense when you have a real gold plated or gold chain watch that it's gonna be actually heavy and this boy is truly heavy. It weighs at least twice as much as this, which makes it very, very difficult for you to want to use it in scenarios like going to bed to actually track your sleep, um, using it for just general fitness because it's like you're taking your smartphone and a watch simultaneously. Like this guy is actually heavier than my OnePlus 6, for instance. It's actually heavier than that. So it's actually a really, really heavy piece of gadget or equipment. So that's what be the biggest downsides for me with this very, very device. Um, the second one comes or boils down to straight up. It's battery life. The battery life on this device sucks. It has rapid charging, yes. Within an hour or less than an hour, actually, you can actually get it back to about 80% and within an hour 30 minutes you can actually get a full charge but at the expense of you actually needing to recharge this guy at least twice every day and I mean it at least twice like I plug it up overnight I put it up in the morning it's good to go um, I use it to probably something around 1 2 p.m. it's already almost flat I need to twist it up back yes yeah, so five minutes would we'll probably get it back to about 85 percent as I said and that will last me for the rest of the day to probably around 9 10 p.m. when it's already out of juice again now it has different battery modes which is the active um, the custom you can actually pretty much customize the battery saving mode but even on the most um, dialed down where it actually takes up most of its features out from operations you still can only get a decent one day use out of it like you still need to recharge say you put it on the smart watch mode or sorry on the regular watch mode which is this mode right here so in that case you will only have the regular watch features and at, the, and at that point it's not like a smart watch just a glorified piece of regular watch on your hands with an OLED display instead of a regular watch down um, the third biggest downside of this device for me came um, through the Wear OS, which is unfortunately, as much as Google's Wear OS has become probably the biggest yardstick for Android Wear today, um, it still doesn't incorporate many of the features you will need by default on Google Wear or on a smartwatch. Things like sleep tracking does not come on it by default. I actually have to use the Cardiogram app, which is literally pretty much launched for this device to track things like my sleep and get a much more of overall of your heart rate and just all these other um, 
basic health parameters that you should be able to get primarily on literally any smartwatch out there unfortunately you don't get that with wear os and as a result it just is a mess but i'm like um unfortunately um but that's literally what it is comparing that to the samsung jet that actually comes with pretty much all the basic apps you need now the downsides to this is you don't get many of the android um Futures or like the Android apps syncing automatically with it, things like the Google Maps, which automatically syncs with this. And once I'm driving and I put on my map on my phone, automatically it plays on my watch. So I don't actually really need to look at my phone. I can look at my watch. I still be getting the map directions. And if I don't have my watch, I could still use Google Maps on this. So things like that actually come free. It makes this on the software side. Yes, there are some downsides, but overall, actually, so if I'm to go into specifically the software experience on. The Android Wear. I think Android Wear actually still gives you the best software experience for any Android phone or Android user if you're trying to go for the Android experience. So things like your notification seamlessly connecting, you responding to text messages and almost every other thing like that, or um, interaction with different kinds of apps from Instagram to Twitter to literally send your tweets, compose your tweets, reply to tweets, DMs, and all of that straight up right from the watch. It just makes the interaction a lot seamless and fluid. Your notifications comes in on time. The Android experience is really, really amazing on the Android Wear, um, or the Wear OS, which is on this. The only downside, as I said, is the lack of something as simple as the fitness or a 360 fitness app, which you should naturally have on any smartwatch basically these days, which unfortunately becomes um, a challenge on this. I actually have to download different third party apps and I have to just get the best um, out of that fitness experience or that fitness tracking experience, which is very, very um, appalling. That being said, the default um, Google fitness still gets you a little bit of like spot tracking or whatnot but it's not just as detailed or in depth or when analytical as simple apps like cardiogram would actually do um or other basic apps out there okay the next part is also voice calls i think the speaker on this is decent um but it's not all that great compared to this guy i could actually have a full-blown conversation on this without actually feeling that i I'm missing my phone for a second. On this one, yes, I can make calls, receive calls and whatnot, but it's a little bit finicky. The sound still sounds a lot like thin can, literally like it's literally like a box of cans um, versus a really well-built, stable speaker that I have on this. Um, that being said, I think the last downsides I have with this device that I may mean, eventually trash it and coax is the fact that Yes, it charges pretty fast, but it lacks wireless charging, which I feel is almost a requirement for any major device you have these days. Um, the Samsung as far back as J2 um, has wireless charging already built into that. This guy sadly doesn't. And to make the matters worse in quotes, why this device just became a big disappointment to me at the end of the day is the fact that when I got it i had so much personal excitement on the device that it was gonna actually replace my chair too it was meant to be an upgrade and add all these amazing features the gps like every single thing you would literally want great extra storage and good processor it was literally meant to be an upgrade um over this but unfortunately after using an extensively testing for well over three months now um this guy has literally just been in my shell for like the last four weeks of the last three months that i've had it it's just been unfortunately one of my worst purchases of 20 20 i believe now um well actually i actually give it a record on the the award of the worst device that i purchased in 2020 unfortunately now um a plus to them is i actually love the dao so going back to the build the dial is actually really great it scrolls and works almost as good as what you have on the apple watch so it is almost as good as the apple watch it's not quite there but the crown actually rotates and works really good which allows you actually swipe from app to app interact to app scroll through notifications a lot faster than you can actually do by just scrolling or tapping on the screen so that is actually a very good that I actually love about it but overall um thanks to the fact that I had too much hype for it and 
eventually it supplemented me on almost every single test comparing to this guy especially um like literally the active jet soup blew it out of the waters that's the fact that this is a generation ahead of the active jet soup in every single department from battery life to build to weight to power management to interactions the only thing this guy won on is literally its seamless connectivity with the android os which um, samsung say has a little bit of way to go on that and i believe probably as a disclaimer it's a disclaimer anyway but i believe the samsung watch 4 coming up next is actually gonna be running on android Wear, so i'm actually really excited about that i'm actually kind of like thinking on how they are, they are actually gonna make that happen because to be very candid and to be on the side of many of these Android Wear devices, Android OS on itself, on itself, or precisely Wear OS is actually very, 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 and I repeat, the very inefficient when it comes to power management. Android has been a very, very power inefficient platform. It consumes battery on latent apps and so many other processes that just run in the background, which is why an iPhone that has literally half the battery capacity of a similar or comparable Android device would last almost as long as that same Android device. Fine, some of the GPUs and the processors and then that Snapdragons might not be as efficient as the Apple as Apple Bionic, the A14s, the A13 chips, but overall, when you just look at the software side of it, Android OS itself, the Wear OS, they are not as power efficient. And especially the Wear OS is actually probably gonna be the worst one if you wanna rate any OS on power efficiency. So it's actually gonna be really exciting to see what the result is with the next generation Samsung chip when that actually comes out running on the Wear OS and how the battery life actually manages to cope with that. But that being said, um, what is my rating or my final review for this device that I eventually did the review? Um, don't buy it. If you're so keen on getting a smartwatch and you want something really, really good or great out there that will actually work really great on the Android platform, I would say if you really want to stick with Wear OS, I would recommend either the Huawei or you go for the new OnePlus Wear. Otherwise, just go for the Samsung Jet Save your champion on the much more price conservative side. And if you're not really so price conservative, then please you just go for the Jet 3. And yeah, that's about it for the Wear OS or for the smartwatch, smart wear version. Sorry for so, but this is my worst buy for 2020, and you guys can take your watch back. Cheers. So, yeah, if you guys like this content, please like this video, subscribe, and I will definitely see you guys on the next video. Uh, my name is Dosage Bunny, and see ya later.